What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. And today's build video is going to be my Night Watcher Spotter build. So, I think this is probably the first time I've actually put this type of build together. I have a previous spotter build that was really good, but uh, I've never tried out the Night Watcher mask. So this was uh, quite the experiment, and uh, well, just sit back, relax, and enjoy all this PvP gameplay. What I'll do then is I'll explain the build in a full breakdown, and then afterwards we will do a little bit of PvE just to show you, you know, what it's like in all aspects of the game. But alright, grab the popcorn, relax, and enjoy some PvP gameplay. Be right back. There are no more rogue reinforcements. Agent down. Serious trauma detected. is yours. Good job. Dead agent, need assistance. You're the only one left on your team, Agent. Keep fighting. Rogue, explosive seeker mine detected. Enforcement's left. Detected. Assistance. 
serious trauma detected. Boost, about to activate. Rogue Defender Drone detected. All right, welcome back. I hope PVP gameplay. Now let's get into the build breakdown. So this is my Night Watcher Spotter build. Now starting off at the top, I'm using the Technician Specialization. Reason being is it helps both types of pull. It gives me the under barrel for my linked laser pointer that I can use for my assault rifle. This automatically pulses the enemy whenever I'm looking at them with this weapon. So that'll proc my spotter. And then also it gives me a plus one skill tier for my scanner pulse. Now you can see in PVE, my scanner pulse cooldown is less than the duration, which means I can have an unlimited scanner pulse for PVE. However, in PvP, what the you know the gameplay you just saw, the cooldown is 54 seconds. 
So that, that's quite the difference. So because of that, I also use the linked laser pointer for the underbarrel. That way I can, you know, proc spotter at both times in PvP. However, in PvE, you do not really need technician because your scanner pulse will come back so quick that you don't even need another, you know, source to give you that pulse. Makes sense. So that is the technician specialization. Now talking about the weapons, I'm using the Police M4. I know it's a surprise. I'm not using the Eagle Bearer or, you know, the, you know, FAMAS, Shield Splinter. I mean, there, there's quite a number of ARs I would use before the M4. However, the M4 is the only one out of all of those that can equip the laser pointer. So that's a huge when looking at what AR you should run for this build. You have to run an AR that is going to be able to e equip the uh, laser pointer. All right. So looking at the attachments for the optic, I'm using crit damage. For the muzzle, again, crit damage. And then for the magazine, the sturdy extended, that bumps me up to the 50 rounds per magazine. And then of course you have to use the linked laser pointer from the specialization. That way you can keep proccing. Now as far as the numbers and attributes, this one's at 105.6k total damage with max AR damage, max damage to targets out of cover, and 18% health damage. Now this one comes with the talent measured. So the top half of the magazine has increased firing rate with lower weapon damage. However, the bottom half of the magazine gives you, you know, less, but more weapon damage. Now using that with damage to targets out of cover, I actually get multiplicative damage out of that. So that's good. Now, as far as my secondary, I'm using the Banshee SMG. This one's at 100.1K total damage, and that's with max SMG damage, max damage to targets out of cover, and 18% crit chance. So it has the talent measured, so the top half of the magazine shoots faster, hits less, and the bottom half shoots slower, hits harder. Now, as far as the attachments on this one, uh, you don't you know, have the capability of running the linked laser pointer on these SMGs. So a lot of this is just crit damage based. And uh, yeah, going to the sidearm, double barrel sawed off, reason being it does 1.3 million total damage. So if you're in a pickle, if you're trying to reload and you know, the enemy's rushing you, you can whip this out and in two shots, you can pretty much take down whatever it is. Also, it also, you know, it procs close and personal, which gives you that 30% weapon damage on top of that. So pretty much a, uh, a boomstick. All right, so looking at the build, I have 759K armor. Yeah, that's a little squishy, but I hit like a Mack truck. Now, but this base RPM on a police M4 is 850. And then with measured, I'm shooting 20% faster. So like, I don't know, it's a lot of DPS. Now doing like a deep dive into the build, I'm running two Providence, mainly for that crit chance. I'm using the Seska again for crit chance and then the Grupo for that crit damage. You have to run the Night Watcher just because of that scanner pulse haste that you get from it. And then for the chess piece, I chose Fenris just because it increases, you know, the base damage of your weapon and spotter is amplified damage. So, you know, you try to try to have the best base damage that way when all the multiplicatives go into action, you can have a, you know, a real higher outcome. But all right, deep starting with the mask. Night Watcher mask. This is a must because it is the Night Watcher uh, spotter build. Now the Night Watcher is the named Giligard mask with 100% scanner pulse haste. So if you did not have this on, it would be a way, you know, it's just a complete different story. So looking at the pulse right now, you can see 9.1 seconds and 54 seconds for that conflict. Now, if I were to take this off just to show you, that would go to 18 seconds and 109 seconds. You can see that the duration is now lower than the cooldown. 
So then you have to run the linked laser pointer because this pulse is not going to be unlimited, even in PvE. And then in PvP it drops to 109 seconds, and that's just unacceptable. So, run the Night Watcher. From the Gilligard brand set bonus, you get 5% total armor. So you're, you know, I, I guess that'll help you feel a little bit better. But for the core attribute, you're, you're going to want to roll weapon damage. And then for me, I chose crit damage for that other attribute, just because I was trying to get the highest crit damage I could with at least, you know, around 50% crit chance. And then for the mod, a max crit damage mod for the exact same logic, trying to get higher crit damage. That way, when I do crit, I get those really high numbers. Now going to the backpack, it is the gift. This is the named Providence Defense Backpack with Perfect Vigilance. Now the brand set bonuses I get from this build, I get 15% headshot damage and 10% crit chance. That's how I'm getting that crit chance so high on this assault rifle. Now as far as the attributes, 14% weapon damage, max crit damage, and 4.8 crit chance. For the mod, a max crit damage mod. Now Perfect Vigilance, what makes this one different than the other Vigilance is just the time of the disabled buff. So you get 25% weapon damage just for wearing the backpack. However, every time you take damage, that buff goes away for normally four seconds. However, running this one, it comes back in three seconds. So it, it's really not a big, you know, fixer, but I wanted to run to Providence. So why not put on the perfect vigilance, get it back a little bit and have all that damage. So yeah. Going to the gloves, Providence Defense gloves. 14 weapon damage just off of max and 11.9 crit damage just off of max. And then I did have a max crit chance roll. Going to the knee pads, Grupo Sombra. For this brand set bonus, I get 15% crit damage. And then for the attributes, max weapon damage, max crit damage and 5.9 crit chance. Now going to the holster, Seska. I'm running this for the crit chance I get from that brand set bonus. And then for the attributes, this one is God rolled, so max weapon damage, crit damage, and crit chance. And then finally, last but not least, the chest piece. Um, the only part of this build I would probably change is roll off the hazard for crit chance, but it is what it is. Now for the brand set bonus, you get that plus 10% assault rifle damage which increases your base damage like I was telling you and then for the core attributes this one is god rolled it does have max weapon damage crit damage and then hazard protection and then for the mod crit damage as well now spotter must have in this build to be running night watcher with spotter now spotter amplifies your total weapon damage and skill damage by 15% to all pulsed enemies. So that's why you want to run the linked laser pointer from the AR. And you wanna run the scanner pulse because you get it back so quick. All right, now as far as the skills, I was showing you PVP gameplay where I was using the scanner pulse and the seeker mine. I was using the seeker mine mainly to uh, mark the enemy if I couldn't keep the pulse on them because of that crazy cooldown they have in conflict. But now that I'm going to be in PvE, I can actually switch this off and just run the scanner pulse. And not only that, but I could probably get away with running, like, say, the Crusader Shield. Maybe do something like that. Um, let's see. Yeah, we could do this. So you could run it like this for PVE because your scanner pulls immediately and it's gonna be unlimited. So you're gonna be able to have these enemies marked time and time again, no matter what, as long as you're you know, hitting the pulse every 11 seconds or whatever it is, you're good to go. So this is the way you could set it up for PVE. You know what I mean? Um, but let me show you the stats just real quick with the M4, and then we will do some PVE gameplay. 
All right, so this is for the police M4. We have 105.6k weapon damage with 42.2k PvP weapon damage. 57 eh, crit chance with 177.1 crit damage. I also have 90% headshot damage and 18% health damage from the AR. Going to the off 98.9 .9 all weapon damage bonus with 40% AR weapon damage bonus. So every time I use the assault rifle with this build, I get 138.9% damage bonus total. And then remember, Spotter gives us that amplified on top. Now looking at the gear talents again, I'm running the Perfect Vigilance talent on the backpack uh, by using the gift. And then I have Spotter rolled on my chest piece that gives us that amplified damage. Going to the defensive tab, 759k armor, 332k health, with 10% explosive resistance and 20% hazard. Now, the 10% on each of those are from my watch, which then gives me, you know, to my disclaimer I do for every single one of these build videos. Now, for this build video, I am at watch level 1653. Maybe these boxes are maxed out. All right, so if you are below 1,000 on the shade level, you're not gonna have all of these boxes maxed out, which means a lot of your attributes are gonna be lower than what you see from my build. However, once you reach shade level 1,000, all of these boxes will be maxed out, and then all you have to do is copy and paste my build, and you can get the exact same numbers. So if you put my build together and the numbers aren't adding up, this might be why. So remember, your watch level does matter up until you hit that 1000 mark. And then after that, everyone is basically the same. All you get is a little bit more health. So yeah. All right, so that is the build breakdown. So we're about to do some PVE. So I'm gonna try it out with the Eagle Bearer and a shield and just uh, keep using this pulse over and over and over and over and over and over and over. All right, so let's do that. And while we wait for matchmake, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to the channel. All right, now let's see, for matchmaking, I'm gonna make this one very easy. Random mission on heroic. Hey, there we go. Let's go help out whoever this is. And hopefully it's an actual mission. Uh oh. Double load. Did I just get kicked? Oh no! Here we go. There's been a lot of black tusk activity around that metro entrance. All right. Clear cool. all hostile elements from the area. Ooh, black tusk mission. Nice. Oh, behind me. Oh, snap. Yo, that grenade. What? I was full armor and that grenade one hit me? Alright, okay, okay. I'll go over here with this guy. See if they pick us up. Hey, get it, Joker. Picking us up, thank you, sir. 
Thank you, thank you. Alright, let me heal up and get back to it. Down to the mall. Alright, so that was that room with the Eagle Bear, right? So, for a lot of you that are like, yo, just show us the M4. Alright, I'll show you the M4. That dog not down. Come on. Active terminal detected. Transmit any data you recover so we can try to figure out what Black Tusk is up to. Piece candy. All right, not too Battery shabby. Black Tusk Intel. I actually do like the uh, M4 with this build, though. It feels a lot smoother, in my opinion, um, than that Eagle Bear did. So let's it's just the keep the, the uh, M4 on there. Looks like we were right about their intentions. Oh come on. That and measure really good on this weapon. Oh, behind me. No, I downed myself. No. Agent incapacitated. Oh no, I'm on fire. Oh, look at that, coming in with the clutch. Man, how did I kill myself there? Oh, I shot the gas. Okay, that makes sense. Alright, don't shoot the gas. Mess you up. Ooh, we have a whole bunch of Wally bots. And some, uh... Baggies. actually a fun little part of the video now. I'm gonna enjoy this now. So I'll just do random like mission and just see what we get like you know fresh and roulette. Oh I forgot to heal up didn't I? My mistake! <laughs> Oh, thank you, Joker. Yo, you look sick. All these different colors. You look like you'd be a part of the the Jokers. Like uh, from what was that? Gotham City Imposters. 
you guys remember that game? That's good. behind us. No! Get to the plaza. Get to the plaza. Oh wait, isn't there something in here? Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Leaving contaminated. Oh area. yeah. I remember this mission. Quite a lot. Just saying. Ouch. Needed. Oh, I'm in the Agent gas down. again. Yo, that gas. That's yo, that's insane. An agent needs I keep assistance. killing myself on that gas. You have killed yourself. Oh thanks, game. Thank you. Thank you for that. Agent down. Oh that it was that can right there. I'm still covered in gas. Yo, they're about to have to wipe. Yo, Sleeth. Are you about to uh, pull it out, bro? To have. An agent needs assistance. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I wonder what my damage is going to be at the end of this mission. I think I joined in about halfway. Secure the area, agent. Exiting contaminated area. See? I'm not gonna have it kill me this time.
Oh, I'm in, the, I'm in it again. I keep getting in that, uh, chemicals. There we go. There we go. Oh, and I got contractor gloves. Yeah, I can, uh, I can share those. I wonder if, uh, any of them need them. I hope they don't leave. Hold on. Oh, wait, we want to look at, uh, our damage. Yo, I got the most damage, and I showed up late. I almost got the most kills, too. I have the best accuracy. Let's see here. Team damage. My real crit percentage is 53%. And my real crit damage is around 77. You guys see that? Interesting. 53 and 77. And I'm, yeah, right around 53. Look at that. Crazy. Yeah, someone got the surge. Good job. Here. Let me share some contractor gloves that are actually god rolled. Let me share a chain killer. I can share this overwatch. No. Spotter on a... Uh, I could probably try that. Maybe. Let's see if there's anything else to share. And then uh, I'll probably end the video there. But you guys just got to see uh, what my night watcher... Ooh, piece of candy. I could use that. Interesting. Alright. So you saw what the Night Watcher spotter build will now do in PvP and PvE. Yeah, I mean, that's alright. Are you guys not going to pick those up? Alright. Well, while we wait for that, I am Kamikaze Von Doom. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think about my Night Watcher spotter build. I'll see you guys in the next one.